Hello everyone, how are you? I hope all of you are doing really good. So welcome to another session of the financial management theory part. And uh, in the last few videos, a lot of uh, CMA students were coming up that, sir, can we use these lectures? Yes, you can also use these lectures. And uh, the CMA 2022 syllabus students, you can use the FM uh, other lectures also, which are the old ones which are available on YouTube. Yes, you can cover the concepts from there. Another request from the CMA students that is coming up is that, sir, please cover the additional CMA part, whether it is a theory part or something. So guys, if you people keep supporting uh, us right by sharing the videos, so definitely, definitely I will support you. I'll definitely cover for the CMA part also. So don't get disheartened. I will be there. I will definitely help you out guys, right? So just focus right now on this and I'll definitely be there for the CMA students also. Okay. So uh, in this chapter types of financing, what we have been doing is, uh, the next topic that we are going to cover is venture capital financing. Now, what is a venture capital financing? Just try to understand the concept, right? Once you have understood the concept, then you can easily read it and you will be done with it. There is Mr. X, right? And Mr. X is what? Mr. X is an entrepreneur, right? He is an entrepreneur, right? He is going to start his new venture right he is going to start his new venture or what we call it as the business right now what is the problem with mr x the problem here is that mr s uh, mr x has great ideas he has great ideas but what is the problem but the problem is there are two problems one is the lack of experience lack of experience that how to run a business or how to put those ideas actually into the working the second problem that mr x is facing is the lack of funds right lack of funds right now he will go to the people or he will go to some firms asking for the funds sir please provide me funds sir please provide me funds sir please invest in my company a perfect example is shark tank right the perfect example is shark tank right now here comes the role of a venture capitalist he will invest in this particular business a venture capitalist right he will invest in the business now whether there is a risk involved in the business or not yes sir this is very risky this is very risky now this venture capitalist is having surplus funds right he is having surplus funds and this venture capital is ready to take on the risk ready to take on the risk Obviously, this new business by Mr. X, who is an entrepreneur, this new business is full of risk, right? But this venture capitalist, he is ready to take on the risk because he has surplus funds. And why he is investing or why he is uh, ready to take on the risk? Because, now you will ask that, sir, why he is ready to take on the risk? Because he can see the growth opportunity in the business, he can see the growth opportunity in the business. That is why he is ready to invest in this particular business, although even if it is a very risky one, right? So he will provide the funds. He will provide the experience also. Clear? But in return, he will expect something, isn't it? Sir, yes, definitely. Uh, a venture capitalist in return in return will expect something isn't it definitely sir he should be getting something because uh, he is going to invest in a very risky business he is putting his hard earned money in a risky business and uh, tomorrow that money might be gone if the business doesn't come into the picture right if the business is not successful then the money of the venture capitalist is also gone so he expects something in return what can he expect in return sir he can expect the equity share in the company equity share or the ownership 
in company right but at any cost this ownership <clears throat> will be equal to less than 49 percent the major part of the ownership will retain with the entrepreneur only that is mr x but this venture capitalist will expect something in return so he can buy the equity shares or he can get the ownership that is why i told you the perfect example is shark tank if you have been following the shark tank there what they are doing is they are investing in the entrepreneur uh, projects right the new project the risky projects they themselves say we see a growth in your project so that is why we are ready to invest in that but in return we want this much of equity in your company what does it mean they want something the some part of the ownership in that company which cannot exceed 49 percent or 50 uh, which cannot exceed 49 percent in fact right or another thing what they can expect is they can uh, expect they, uh, this uh, normally the money under the venture capitalist is being provided as the equity right or it can also be provided as a combination of equity plus debt right so on that debt they will charge interest clear another thing that if you are following the shark tank you will get to know that another thing that they can get is they can get the royalty in sales royalty in sales right because the venture capitalist also wants to safeguard himself herself or the firm whatever it is right itself so that is why they can ask for the ownership they can ask for ownership plus if they are giving a debt they will charge interest on that or they can ask for the royalty on royalty on sales also right it may be two percent three percent ten percent twelve percent royalty on the sales right so if it, when whenever it turns into a profitable business we will charge royalty from you right or a part of profits so anything can be there so this is about the venture capital financing right so venture capital financing is what the financing of a new highly risky venture promoted by qualified entrepreneurs right who have the great ideas but the problem is they lack the funds who lack experience and funds to give shape to their ideas that is what i told you characteristics it is basically an equity finance in the new companies it can be viewed as a long-term investment in the growth oriented in the growth oriented growth oriented means uh, the business having the growth opportunities right small and medium firms apart from providing the funds the investor also provides support in the form of sales strategy business networking now if uh, if any of the sharks on the shark tank is investing in a business they are not only providing the money they are they are going to provide their experience also whether it is in terms of product packaging whether it is in terms of marketing whether it is in terms of data collection whether it is in terms of the sales whatever way it is they are going to provide uh, you know the entrepreneurs with a lot of things lot of inputs besides the money right so methods is one is equity financing that is the ownership right does not exceed 49 percent because the major part has to be with the entrepreneur he is the owner conditional loan conditional loan is they will give the money as a debt but there are conditions attached to it right that they have to return it uh oh wait a minute so the condition can be the royalty after the venture is able to generate the sales in this case they might not charge interest right so that depends income note it is a hybrid which combines both the features the conventional loan and the conditional loan conventional loan where they will be charging the interest and on the conditional loan they will be charging the royalty right uh, participating debentures can be there such security is carries the charges in three phase in the starter phase no interest is charged next stage a low rate of interest is charged up to a particular level after that high rate of interest is required to be paid so it is basically a debt only it is basically purely debt but that is being divided into the different phases in the initial phase the investor also knows that the business is not into the profit the business needs support and money so they will charge no interest on that right once the business is established a little bit established they are into the growth stage then they will charge some part of the interest right at a lower rate maybe seven eight percent once the business is at the maturity level is fully established then they will charge a higher rate of interest maybe 15 percent 12 percent 13 percent whatever it is clear so this is what is all about the venture capital financing i hope this is clear right 
so moving on to the next one that is debt securitization now what is debt securitization just try to understand the concept then read it okay then i leave to you people to read it now what happens sir there is a company there is a, a finance company there is a finance company let's say x now this finance company has uh, is uh, into the housing loans they are into providing the housing loans okay now they have provided housing loans to many people right so there are many people to these housing loans have been provided a b c d e f g h right so to all these people they have provided a housing loan great sir now what happened sir the funds are over the funds are over with this company x now what happened this company x will approach will approach another company that is y this y is what this is known as spv special purpose vehicle this is known as special purpose vehicle right now why will they approach company x what is the purpose they will this company x will sell all housing loans all housing loans to y to arrange more funds now because company x was running short right so company x says sir buy all the housing loans from me all the housing loans belong to you now please give me some funds against those loans right okay now mr uh, joke uh, the company y it agrees to that now these loans are transferred to company y what will company y do with these loans what is a debt securitization basically this is a debt right this is what this is a debt what is meant by securitization once the debt is transferred to company y this company y will convert will convert all debt into marketable securities into marketable securities right and issue it to investors and issue it to interested investors right so what will company y do company y will convert all the debt whatever the debt is there into the marketable securities and issue it to interested investors let's say the investor here is mr gg right so mr gg is the investor here who has invested in the marketable securities now mr gg will expect interest on it is isn't it if he has invested in the marketable securities he will expect a return he will expect the interest on these marketable securities how will the interest be paid to the mr gg just look at this whole chart and try to understand we have done the securitization of the debt right we have converted our debt into the marketable securities those marketable securities have been issued to the investor now this mr gg who is the investor he will be expecting the return on the marketable securities who will pay company y will pay sir the company y will pay that's fine but where will the company y get the money from from this from this they will be paying interest to interest to gg but through company y or through company x and y because this a b c d e f g h they will not be aware of the transaction they only know that they have taken a loan from company x they have no idea that company x has sold the debts to company y company y has converted into marketable securities and ultimately the uh, there is an investor gg no but whatever is the payment of the loan being done by a to h that will be the interest that mr gg will be getting on the marketable securities this is what is known as debt securitization right i know it is little bit complicated just listen to it again uh, you know go slow aaram se sochna isko fir se debt pehle debt diya 
फिर उसको सिक्योरिटीज में कन्वर्ट दिया फिर इन्वेस्टर को दे दी वो सिक्योरिटीज एंड व्हेन द इन्वेस्टर इज एक्सपेक्टिंग एन इंटरेस्ट ऑन दैट दैट इंटरेस्ट विल बी पेड फ्रॉम द रिसीट ऑफ द लोन और द रिसीट ऑफ द डेट वेदर इट इज द इंटरेस्ट और वेदर इट इज द प्रिंसिपल अमाउंट from that this gg will be paid interest this is what is there in the debt securitization right so please go through with it just read it once the similar example is there you will be able to understand it right just go through it once the process of debt securitization okay so what is the benefit here the benefit here is that this company x will get this will get additional funds additional funds to issue more loans right so this is the benefit that company x will get get right so mr uh, what will the benefit that mr uh, this uh, company y will get they will be collecting the loan they will be getting the interest they will be getting the principal amount and secondly they have issued the marketable securities right they have uh, you know raised the money by issuing the marketable securities they have raised funds raised money by issuing by issuing marketable securities so that is the benefit that company y is getting company y is getting the funds right and mr gg mr gg has invested and he will get the return how will he get the return from the debt payment that will be done by a a b c d e f g h right so this is the whole process of debt securitization you can write it down one second okay you can write down the whole procedure just listen to it again and again obviously you do not have restrictions on the youtube on the views and all so you can listen to n number of times just listen to it again and again right and try to understand it what is debt securitization okay now the next one is lease financing so what is their a lease what is the lease financing first of all first of all you need to understand what is lease financing lease financing is there is mr a who is the owner of an asset owner of an asset right mr a is the owner of asset but he is not using that asset right mr a is the owner of asset for example mr a is the owner of a car right he is the owner of a car but he doesn't know how to drive a car so there is a company ola now ola approaches mr a he says that sir if you are not using the car please give us the car on a lease right lease means basically a sort of a rent give us the car on rent mr a says okay sir you can take my car but in return of the car which is given by the owner is mr a the ola is just using the mr a's car right as a lease now will mr a not get anything in return mr a will get something in return ola will pay lease rentals <clears throat> to mr a right so mr a anyhow was not, not using the car by giving the car on the lease to ola mr a is getting the benefit he is getting the lease rentals he is getting the additional income otherwise also the car was st st standing in his house and uh, the, that was uh, being turned into a scrap now at least that car is generating income that asset is generating income for mr a right now this mr a here is known as lesser right and this ola is known as lessi right so lesser is the owner of the asset and the lessee is the one who is going to use that asset and the lessee is going to pay lease rentals to the lesser right so basically if you talk about there are uh, two types of uh, major major two types of lease one is the operating lease one is the operating lease and another one is the financial lease now what is an operating lease and what is a financial uh, lease no need to read it from here just read it from the difference between the two you will be able to understand each and everything you don't uh, 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 you know you are not required to read the earlier part 
what is our financial lease and what is an operating lease first we'll talk about operating lease what is there in the operating lease he says the lessee is only provided the use of an asset for a certain time the risk incident to the ownership belongs wholly to the lesser he says under the operating lease the lesser is going mr uh, what is there uh, we have taken mr x or mr a mr a is going to give the car to Ola only for the operation purposes, only for the usage purposes. Tomorrow, if something happens to the car or there is repairs and maintenance, that everything is the responsibility of whom? It is the responsibility of Mr. A, that is the lesser. The lessee is only using the car on the behalf of lesser, right? In case of a financial uh, lease, the risk and the reward incident to the ownership are passed on to the lessee. The lesser only remains the legal owner. Here, the lesser says, okay, you take away the car. Uh, every responsibility of the related to the car is for the lessee. The lesser says, okay, I will remain the legal owner. On papers, lesser will remain the owner. But actually, everything from repairs and maintenance, if something happens, there is an accident for the car, the responsibility belongs to whom? The responsibility of everything belongs to lessee under the financial lease. Under the operating lease, the responsibility is of the lesser. Under the financial lease, the responsibility is of the lessee, right? The lesser bears the risk of obsolescence, right? So obviously, the risk and everything belongs to lesser. Here, the lessee bears the risk of obsolescence that if there is an accident for the car, right? Who is responsible for it? Obviously, it will become obsolete. Who is responsible? Here, the lesser is responsible and here, the lessee becomes responsible. Right? Under the operating lease, as the lesser does not have difficulty in leasing the same asset to the other willing lessee, the le lease is kept cancelable by the lesser. So, in this case, Mr. A can give uh, the car to the Ola just for five years. Right? After that, Mr. A can cancel the lease because everything is in the hands of lesser itself. So, he can cancel the lease and then uh, give it to Uber. Right, so it is up to him. He can, uh, uh, you know, give the asset on lease to n number of people. Anytime he can cancel the lease, until and unless there is a written agreement. Uh, in case of a financial lease, the lesser is interested in his rentals and not in the asset. So, in case of a financial lease, the lesser says, "Just take away the car. I don't need it. What I am concerned with is the rentals, the income that I will be generating from that car. I am interested in that." You take away the car, whatever you want to do, do it with the car. Repairs and maintenance, accident, whatever it is, it is the responsibility of lesser. Lessee. The lesser says, I am the owner, that's fine, but I am interested more in the rentals only. Right? He must get his principal back along with the interest. Therefore, the lease is non cancellable by either party because the lesser is not interested in the asset. He doesn't want that asset back because he was not using it anyhow. Mr. A was not using the car. What he will get by get, uh, getting the car back? No, he says, I am getting the lease rentals through which I will be able to recover the cost of the car. Simple. Right? So Mr. A is saying, Mr. A is saying, I have lease rentals. I have to say that my cost, car ki cost will be recovered for me. It's enough for me. ठीक है ना मुझे इससे ज्यादा और कुछ नहीं चाहिए हमें संतुष्टि है उतने में ही ऑपरेटिंग लीज यूजुअली द लेसर बियर्स द कॉस्ट ऑफ रिपेयर्स एंड मेंटेनेंस ऑब्वियसली बिकॉज़ द रिस्क एंड रिवॉर्ड एवरीथिंग बिलोंग्स टू द लेसर इन दिस केस द लेसर एंटर्स इनटू अ ट्रांजैक्शन ओनली एज अ फाइनेंसर ही डज नॉट बियर द कॉस्ट ऑफ रिपेयर्स और मेंटेनेंस हु विल बियर द कॉस्ट ऑफ द रिपेयर्स एंड मेंटेनेंस द लेसी विल बियर लेसी विल बियर ऑल कॉस्ट राइट the next one is uh, the lease is usually non payout since the lesser expects to lease the same asset over and over again to the several users it is a full payout that is a single lease repays the cost of asset together with the interest here uh, uh, you know the non payout means the lease rentals are less you might not be able to recover the whole cost from a single lease agreement right because what you are interested in if you have given a car to the ola for 5 years right the lease rentals might be less and uh, you might not be able to recover the full cost of the car in those five years, right? Because you, what is your planning? You are planning to give it on the lease rentals again and again and again. So over a long period of time, you might recover it. But in the in case of a financial lease, you will be able to recover it from a single lease because you are not going to release again and again that asset, right? You are giving it to a single person, use it till your life, right? And you will be able to recover it, full payout. 
so majorly broadly these are the two important types of lease that is financial lease and operating lease there are other types also that is sales and lease back what is there in the sales and lease back mr x right he purchases an asset mr x mr x purchases an asset right then the second this is the first transaction second transaction is mr x sold asset sold this asset which he has purchased to mr y ha huh? okay now the third transaction that is going to take is mr y mr x takes on lease the same asset takes on lease the same asset so first he purchased the asset then he sold the asset to mr y and then he takes on lease the same asset from mr y this is known as sale and lease back right sale and lease back first you purchase a asset then you sell the same asset then you take the same asset on lease that's it right and all these transactions are doing in the records only sir only in the records nothing uh, physically uh, the things are not happening right physically uh, the, the asset is not physically exchanged but happen in the records only the main advantage of this is that lessee can satisfy himself completely regarding the quality of an asset because he has purchased himself that asset so he is assured of the quality of the asset that asset is of good quality it was his own uh, selection only right so after the possession of the asset convert the sale into a lease agreement clear then leveraged lease leveraged lease what is a leveraged lease here try to understand leveraged leases uh, there are three parties involved mr x right he is a lesser right there is mr y who is a lessee right and the third party involved here is mr z who is a lender right now mr x wants to purchase an asset right uh, let's say the cost of asset is 1 cr now mr x takes a loan that is almost equivalent to 80% 80% of 1 cr that is equivalent to 80 lakhs he takes a loan from mr z so mr z becomes the lender right with this loan he purchases this asset and with this loan he purchased the asset right mr x purchases asset with loan from mr z okay now what is doing now this asset he will be giving to mr y gives the asset on lease uh, a great transaction right so he takes a loan from mr z with that loan he purchases the asset and then the same asset is given on lease to mr y now what will happen sir for this particular loan he will have to pay interest isn't it for this loan he will have to pay interest let's say the interest amount is 5000 rupees per month okay let's say the interest amount that is payable by x to z is 5000 rupees on the other hand here he will receive here he will receive lease rentals let's say the lease rental is 10000 rupees now what will mr x do mr x will ask mr y that sir pay 5000 Five thousand directly paid by Mr. Y, that is lessee, to Mr. Z, that is lender. Sir, what about the remaining five thousand? Ten thousand is the total lease rent. Out of that, he is paying this interest on the behalf of Mr. X, right? He is paying an interest of five thousand on behalf of Mr. X. Five thousand is what directly paid to Mr. uh ha huh, by mr y to mr z what about the remaining 5000 remaining 5000 will be transferred to remaining 5000 will be transferred to the lesser clear 
this is what is known as a leveraged lease confusing little bit but listen to it again carefully you will be able to understand it right uh, the next one is sales aid lease sales aid in lead, uh, lease is what the lesser enters into an agreement with the manufacturer of the asset that sir i will help i will promote your asset by giving it on the lease i will buy it give it on lease buy it give it on lease i will promote your asset uh, in return what he will be getting one he will be getting the lease rental second he will be getting a commission for from the manufacturer right for example i need a farming machine today right so i go to a person that person promotes me that this xyz company machine this is the best machine he is selling that machine to everyone uh, giving it on lease right to everyone so this is this is what he is promoting uh, the, the asset of that particular xyz company so he will get a commission from the company also and he will get the lease rentals also double benefit double munafa the last one is close ended and the open ended close ended and open ended lease in the close ended lease the asset gets transferred to the lesser at the end of the lease the risk of obsolescence residual etc remain with the lesser being the legal owner of the asset so close ended is basically what the close ended deal is basically an operational lease operating lease right in the open ended lease the lessee has the option of purchasing the asset at the end of the lease period in close ended the asset at the end of a lease period for example mr x has given to the ola the car for usage of 5 years after 5 years the car will get back to mr x right the car will get back to mr x only and the risk and everything is related to mr x whereas in case of uh in it is not completely an operating lease it is to some extent right and uh, in case of a close uh, in case of an open ended lease at the end of 5 years the ola has the option the lessee has the option to buy that car from mr x instead of being on the lease they can purchase the asset from uh, the lesser clear so these are the other times uh, types of leases important here is operating and financial lease the other leases you should remember what is there clear okay we are done with this in the next uh, video we'll take up the next topic that is the short term sources of finance so we are done with the long term sources in the next video we will take up uh, the short term sources of finance which is very very easy trade credit accrued expenses and deferred income advances from customer commercial papers treasury bill certificate of deposit bank advances short term loan overdraft clean overdraft cash credit advances against goods bills purchased discounted financing of export trade by the banks we will see i'll what i will do is i will just give you the explanation of the things right rest everything you will be uh, doing it on your own reading part you can do it because ultimately we have to write in our own language itself the only important thing is to include the main 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 points that is the most important thing right so see you guys in the next video till then stay safe stay healthy keep studying keep sharing thank you so much